Hi, this is Sandy Sims with SCS Digital and the Accord Sequarello. In this tips and tricks video, I'll show you a couple of nice CV tricks to control live input and sequences in a new way. Using CV Learn, we can select which block in the playlist gets armed next. First, let's configure the CV inputs, CC5 and CC6, so they'll play notes from it external gate and CV. I'm setting CC5 to be the gate, but if you need to have an extra 1 volt per octave CV input, I'd recommend using the clock out jack for the gate as it's less accurate than the CC5 and CC6 jacks. In this case it's accurate enough for the learned function. Click on the space beneath Learn to exit. Now up to the Jump To Quick Box, which is how we're going to use a single CV to arm multiple blocks in the playlist. To get numerical alignment, we'll use the Group Selection option, rather than the Rows. Highlight and hit the Yes button to learn it in. Next, we'll make five empty song loops from the default 96 bar dummy song. Each should be as short as possible, which is one bar, so the reaction time is reasonable. These could be two or four bars, depending on whether you want them to be quantized to arm on every X bars or not. Here in the playlist, they would simply play through from one block to the next, so they need to be separated into little groups. The fifth must be deleted as it's 92 bars long. Just use insert at the place you wish to insert an empty cell. Oops. Now jump to will recognize these four groups splitting the CV into four parts. The play button must be hit though for this to work or they'll just arm and do nothing. I will patch CC5, the gate input, and CC6, the note CV input, from the adjacent RITEM so we can hear the notes. <laughs> I just knobbed a varying CV into the RITEM, so it's rather random sounding. It could just as well be an LFO or random CV generator. Double clicking a song loop block and selecting edit will jump to the song effects quick box. Song effects 1 in this case. I'll turn on the scale quantizer. So there's two choices. Record this in and apply the scale and quantization and transpose afterwards. Or scale and transpose it as it comes into the sequarolo. Let's do the latter. Now you can hear the major seven applied by song effects number one. I'll set transpose as it logically follows a scale in the chain. Maybe I'll just leave this first one at C, where the scale roots. The apply to should be active too, in case there will be sequences in the future that will need to follow these root and scale changes and the transpose is changed away from zero, and scales apply to both as well. From the playlist we can access the others. I'll speed this up. So arming the next block in playlist and hitting play will call up its song effect so we can hear the changes as they're made. That 
sounds fine. It's probably better to set the scale before the transpose with random notes. Let's do a custom scale for this one. Not sure what I want here. That'll do. And the fourth. A minor seven will work. And transpose. I just realized I forgot to set apply scale to both. So plus eight. There, so all song effects, scales, and transpose offsets are done. Small test to make sure things are going smoothly. Yep, jump two is working. Now for the fun part. You may recall we're going to use clock out jack set as an input to change jump two groups one to four. Let's plug it in. I'll change the CV level to go through each song effects. The Ritem has recorded my CV changes, so we'll play on its own now. Here in the playlist you can see blocks arming with the CV. I'll patch 
the jump to CV over to uh, LFO. So this is a good way to control scale quantization and transposition of a CV gate and notes coming in. Keep in mind though that jump to will also arm other tracks, and if they have less groups, the first block will be armed to play. I have a simple bass sequence in tracks 1, so it just gets rearmed when there's a change, not an issue. But if there are multiple different blocks, then some placement may be necessary to use with this hack. So this might be useful, but maybe not. I like it. For the second part of the tips and tricks number four, we're going to have a look at how to play chord using one CV input for a gate and the other as a chord selector. Something like the Melissa module. This tracks tracker will have different chords from step 1 to 64, and each is being entered here with various methods and such, which is a topic of a di totally different video, so I'm fast forwarding through it. Each of these chords stays close to a theme, but some deviate, and most are unique. You wouldn't always need to have this many chords though, but it's important that all steps are filled over the range. For example, you may only need eight chords, so copy and paste the same one into eight steps together, then move on to the next. Each note in the grid should have the same note effects applied. This is easy enough with the editor's fill button. In the note effects we'll be setting the probability parameter as all, nothing else. So the reason I have done this is because we can use the CV input's learn function to select the probability and the bottom of the sequence, thus starting it at any point. I've already set this up, which is why I used Node Effects 4. The clock out jack as CV in will set the master transpose just to round it all out. So the probability setting acts like an analog gate. If it's zero volts, the probability is zero, so no notes play. If it's at 5 volts, then probability is at, at or near 100% and all the notes play. But if it's somewhere in between, some notes will play while others not because of the probability. I've also added some envelopes to patch to, to experiment with the CV inputs. Some are free running and some are triggered by clock or bars. There's also VCOs patched in. The track sequence size is set to one step. Again, you may choose two or three, which is also cool, but for this demo, I'll leave it at one. The track's clock malt is set at four. Notice the bottom is already changing.
The blue cord is CC6, selecting the bottom. CC5 is patched into an envelope pulsing that's off the screen. Okay, let's hit play. The Ritem is already changing the CV. The probability gate is through this attenuator. See how the notes thin out? Now I'll patch the gate over to the diminishing sine wave of envelope 1. The probability varies depending on where it is when the track step finishes and a new one starts. And the faster pulsed envelope. Varying the envelope rate demonstrates a probability. The track steps are aligning with the low parts of the pulse, which is why notes don't play. Now back over to the slower pulsing envelope 4. The sine wave of envelope 1 is offset enough that at least a bit of probability remains in the troughs. Now I am patching over to a fast LFO. Changing the LFO rate changes the rhythm as it comes in and out of phase. Now to patch the clock out CV input routed to the master transpose over to the first Ritem CV out. It's rather chaotic, but with a slow sequencer it would be way better. Well, enough of that. Patching to a slow complex waveform LFO. I'll move the transpose over the step envelope 3, which will be more repetitious.
timing of our probability gate is pretty decisive and somewhat rigid in that the high states must be just before the track's tracker steps in order to play chord notes in that step, or it'll skip. But with the arpeggiator, these timings don't matter as much. Well, each step need not play because of the latching. The arp latches chords and has its own timing. The probability lowered will leave some notes still arping even if the chord changes. This is because there's three arps going, and two of them continue with their latch notes while the new chord notes haven't been enough to replace them yet. Transpose seems better too. Have a listen. Is this cool or what? By the way, this is version 1.7, but everything here should work with version 1.6. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this tips and tricks uh, video number four. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more of the Sequoia hidden talent. I'm Sandy Sims. Thanks for watching.